So before we proceed in talking about how to structure ads and create ads, and then of course, how we move into the mechanics that I'm gonna show you of actually where to click and how to do things to actually set up the stuff inside your AdWords account, where I'm gonna show you how to walk through it all. Before we even get to that, we gotta cover something else. We gotta go over Google's ad guidelines and rules. Now, in the resources section for this module, I'll link to Google's page that outlines all their rules and stuff in detail. But let's go over a few key ones uh, that I think are important. Now, a lot of people I've worked with in the past when they've set up campaigns or they've had problems, or me myself personally, if I've set up campaigns and had problems, you always wonder, hey, why did this not get approved? Why did they reject this? But if you look really close to their guidelines, you can pretty much preempt any of that from happening if you follow their rules. And uh, I'll go over a few of them and make some comments about some of them that have uh, actually affected me in the past. So uh, see Google site for info and restricted content. They have specific rules about certain types of content, like adult content and gambling content. A lot of it's not allowed, but then they have other restrictions on certain things like the health market. So if you're in the weight loss business or you sell supplements or any kind of information or diet plans or you know bodybuilding, anything like that, any kind of fitness thing, you're gonna wanna look at their guidelines and rules and see what it says under their healthcare slash health uh, content related uh, ad restrictions because there are only certain types of ads that you can run in their system and what you can or cannot say and, and different things that are, are restricted. So there are all kinds of restrictions for pharmaceuticals and, and all kinds of other things related to the health market. So, and well beyond that, that may affect your business. So you wanna make sure and check that out. Uh, then there's also stuff about, you know, if you're running a political ad based on certain campaigns and rules, and then they cover some of the editorial guidelines and things related to trademarks. So if you're curious about knowing the answer, if you can use someone else's trademark and how you can use it, because you can use other people's trademarks, but you have to follow certain rules and how you use it uh, in order to do it. Otherwise, uh, your ad can be... Uh, stopped and unapproved and uh, you can even lose your account and be banned. So the one thing you don't want to do as an internet marketer, as a business owner, as someone building a business with digital marketing, you don't want to get your AdWords account banned. So don't break any of these rules. Don't do anything shady. Don't try to be sneaky. Google will find out. If they don't find out initially, they can eventually find out. Your competitors will actually tell on you. I have seen this happen many times. So if you do anything sneaky at all with redirects or misleading ads or an ad for something that you replace with something else with a different landing page later, like if you have one landing page approved and they try to swap it out with other things, Google will find out eventually. And if it's against their rules, you risk losing your AdWords account. And it can be very painful for people that I know that have been banned from AdWords to try to get a new account and get in good standing and kind of get things started all over again because your AdWords connects with analytics and other things and they can really see if you're just creating a new account under a new name. And so it's a big pain in the butt. So you want to play by their rules if you're going to use their system. So you can't have any malicious ad sites or apps that abuse the network in any way. That kind of goes without saying. Um, no trying to bypass any of the review processes that they use. So if you have a landing page, of course, and if you put a destination URL in that tries to, I've heard of people doing this before, where they try to find the IP ranges of Google servers for one, the automated algorithm that comes and looks at a landing page, or two, an IP block that a Google uh, employee will be on that they'll be using when they go to load your page to review it. Uh, they'll actually, this is serious. I've had heard of people actually having their server serve a different landing page to the Google automation or a Google employee different from what the user will get to when they click on the ad. Now, if you have to go to that kind of trouble to break their rules and do the stuff like that, it's not really worth it. Like I said, you're going to be found out eventually. All a competitor has to do is click on your ad, see this non-conforming landing page, take a screenshot, capture a URL, mail it to Google, report you, and you can be banned. So it's not worth doing any of that kind of stuff to go around their rules. You can't cloak or hide the true destination after the click. I just kind of refer to that. So there's none of that trying to hide where the users are actually going to go. It's all ne it all needs to be very transparent. And you want to anyways, in order to build your business, in order to maximize the, the money you may make from a Google AdWords campaign. So there's no reason not to. Don't use a non-SSL page for sensitive user data, especially like ordering with credit cards and things like that. 
If you don't have an SSL order form, of course you should with every shopping cart system out there or anything you have set up. Uh, if you don't, Google can you know not approve your uh, your your entire account, let alone your landing page, because they seem that is very, see that as very very unsafe for their users. You've got to be clear about what data is collected and why. We covered this a little bit. We talked about landing page guidelines. That's in the rules if you went and looked at it. So if you're going to collect any data on an opt-in, you want to have a privacy policy, all that stuff. If you're going to collect other data for like any kind of lead gen form. You kind of want to state, you know, what's going to happen to their data. It won't be sold, yada, yada, yada. It will be protected, whatever, um, to clarify what the data, what's going to happen to their data and why you're collecting it. You can't have any misrepresented or misleading ads. So you can't do anything, you know, just that's not consistent with what the landing page is and what you're advertising. Um, so that's that just goes without saying. No blind offers or opt-ins. So you can't send people to a landing page and then just say something like, click here to download without saying what it is, without telling more about it. Or you've probably seen in the past maybe from some uh, internet marketers doing product launches where they'll promote and have affiliates send traffic to a very, very simple and basic landing page that literally just says, put your email in to subscribe and they'll have like a one or two sentence headline uh, where it'll say like, uh, get the 16 secrets to being a high paid consultant email address below. And it's a very simple above the fold thing just to try to maximize opt-ins. Well, Google won't approve that and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll disapprove that type of page. And as we already went over landing pages, it won't pass the muster, so to speak, for, um, for, the, for the quality score rating for that page anyways, because it doesn't contain all those other things. Uh, so you can't use blind offers or, or opt-ins. This is a big one that trips up marketers. You know, a lot of us are taught to use, uh, you know, very compelling copy, very persuasive words and phrases, you know, very enticing types of things, even sometimes intriguing or mysterious things just to really get the interest in someone and, and get them sucked into our copy. Uh, but Google doesn't allow you to, to use misleading or unrealistic claims. They are real sticklers for this. Now, it can depend on which manual human review person you get. But overall, they really don't like sa you saying stuff like, you know, number one summer camp in the United States, you know, or number one strongest tent in the world, you know, or uh, number one is such a kind of subjective claim to there's nothing that actually validates that as a fact to be number one in anything. Unless of course it's, you know, fine line with like number one, uh, best selling New York times, best selling author, if you actually were one or things like that. So they don't like that. They don't like to use the word, uh, words like, you know, the best things like that. They'll disapprove you for. Um, so be very careful that you're not using a lot of those kind of like, you know, kind of heavy adjectives to describe um, your products or services or business because they'll, they'll shut that down as an unrealistic claim because you can't back it up that you are the best SEO agency in the world. There's no such thing. You know, there's no real rating for that. Um, so shy away from saying number one, the best, top, whatever. You get the point. And then the other thing are unrealistic claims um, when it comes to, and they give two examples for a reason, weight loss and financial gain. So if you're in any kind of uh, you know health thing, like I said a minute ago, you'll, you'll definitely want to go over, uh, click the link that'll be in the resources section to check out their full list of guidelines. You'll want to really look into what they have for their section on health, what's allowed and what's not allowed. But they don't allow you to make unrealistic claims. Like you can't say, you know, lose, lose 20 pounds in a week on this new juice fast. You, you just, you, you know, you got to be very careful about the things you state in your ad. Um, if they're deemed, even if they're true, if they're deemed unrealistic, they can deny you and it can cause problems. Same thing with any financial gain, money making type thing, whether it's flipping houses or trading the stock market or set, you know, making money from an internet business or being an author or whatever, you know, any kind of unrealistic claim, like, you know, make up to, you know, $10,000 in your first month by running your own blog, you know, that kind of stuff. They got all the get rich quickie type of hypey numbers and, and all those types of things. Uh, Google doesn't like that stuff, as you can imagine it. And they can, uh, 
stop you from being able to run ads uh, that state that. And the problem is too, what you'll find, it changes from time to time, but from my experience working with Google and working with AdWords, if they shut you down for something, it's almost like your account gets flagged, like this is kind of a, a bad person. And many times where in other accounts, you know, where you're, you're getting a lot of positive activity, you're not having any problems, you know, you're setting up campaigns, you're testing things, you're pausing things that aren't working out well, you're adding new things. Those accounts that don't have any problems with the landing page automatically getting approved many times and the ads being approved, you know, it's like, it's like they'll kind of put you into a basket of good preferred customer and you kind of go to the, the you skip the line for reviews and a lot of times they'll just rely on an algorithmic automated review, it seems. Whereas if you start having any problems, like you get ads shut down for unrealistic claims or, or misleading statements or things like that, it's almost like you get flagged and you get put in like another basket of a questionable customer where it seems like everything takes longer before it becomes active. It seems like they must be reviewing everything once or twice before they'll approve it. Uh, so that's no fun. I've, I've seen it both ways. I've been on, you know, the opposite end of both of those. And um, you definitely want to try to be, you know, the good customer that's doing things right, that's getting things approved, that's doing things by the book, that's not having a problem with their guidelines. Because if you start having problems, like I said, it can really delay things. And that's the last thing you want. Anyway, I'll link to the guidelines and rules in the resources section. There's a lot more than what I've listed here. I've just listed kind of the major things to tell you about. And uh, as always, using any system, you'll want to know about their terms of service, their rules, their guidelines, their do's and don'ts, and everything else. If you're going to, you know, play ball in their sandbox and in their system, you have to know how to play within the rules. Otherwise, you can lose your account. And of course, you definitely don't want that to happen with Google AdWords.